Hello everybody, today I'm going to tell you about this Powermatic stock feeder. It's the model PF3 Junior. Now after I got my shaper, it didn't take me long to realize that I needed a power feeder to feed stock through those big cutters. It will be a lot safer using this power feeder. Now the first thing we had to do is drill and tap the table on the shaper so that we could mount the arm that will hold the power feeder. There's all sorts of adjustments that can be made with this power feeder and by turning this crank here you can raise the power feeder up and down and of course it'll swing out of the way. By turning this locking knob here you can adjust that tube in and out. All right, so we'll show you this thing running. Of course, it's got forward and reverse. Now, this is the first time I've used a power feeder, and I can see that there's quite a bit of adjustments that need to be made. You line this up about right here on your cutter, so that when you stick your uh, stock into the feeder, that first uh, roller will catch the board, and then the, uh, two ro the other two rollers will pull it on through. Now the book says to turn the power feeder in a little bit so that it, when it pulls the board through it pushes up against the fence. Now you adjust the power feeder down so there's down pressure on the board. Not too much, just enough so that it grabs the board and pulls it through. I imagine if you had too much down pressure on those rollers it would probably wear them out faster. Just enough is enough. Another thing I learned is that you want to hold that board up against the fence until it gets past the uh, split fence on the other end, or it uh, it'll kick it out and it won't feed feed all the way through. So I'll shove it through again. This time I'll hold it against the fence until I see it pass that uh, split fence on the other side there, and then the machine holds it right up against that fence. And gives you a nice clean cut. And of course another advantage of using the stock feeder is that it pulls that stock through at a steady rate, giving you a nice finished look there. Now after using this stock feeder just a little bit here, I can see that uh, after you get it set up, you can run your stock through and it'll, it'll come out the same every time just a good safe way to do your milling. Okay here I've got my little homemade cover on top of the shaper and you can see how well that uh, dust collector takes the dust and chips away. Now that board will kick out if you don't hold it up against the fence, and there it goes, until it passes by the split fence on the outfeed uh, side of the cutter. And so when you start the board in, just hold it against the fence, up against, and it'll, it'll feed right through nice. Okay, here's another view. Start our piece through. Hold up against the fence, and here it comes, right up against that outfeed fence, looking good. So this is the quarter horse power model, it's just a small power feeder, and a friend of mine uh, has some big power feeders, and he said, you know, these small ones will work just fine in your shop, you don't need these great big monstrosities. He said, uh, go ahead and get that quarter horsepower. I can see for my applications here in my shop, this feeder is going to work just fine. So I guess what I'll do here to store the power feeder, I, I'd like to get it up off from the table so that it's not sitting down on the rollers. So I use a couple blocks of wood there and I'll lower those uh, end metal plates down onto the blocks. and. Uh, that power feeder is, can rest in that position right there with no no pressure on the uh, 
rollers at all. So if you're thinking about buying a power feeder, I hope you found this video useful. Like I said, this was my first setup and, and use of this Powermatic stack feeder. And uh, I look forward to using it here in the shop. If you like the video, why not hit the like button and subscribe to TimTools99. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.